Welcome back into the shop, everyone. My name is Steve Rodowski, and I'm the territory manager for Trust Joyce Warehouser in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So what I have before you today is a couple different series and sizes of TJI iJoyce kind of mocked up. And what I have, um, a nine and a half inch 210 uh, that would be showing as a cantilever, uh, 11 and 7 eighths 210 that's showing with an end bearing, and then a 16 inch 560, uh, the two by four here would be showing a center bearing or a continuous eye joist um, over a center bearing wall or possibly even a beam. Um, but one of the things that as I'm flipping these around that you might be noticing is some of the areas that are marked out in red. Um, and this is what we call uh, the no hole zone. And all of these zones are going to start um, from the inside of bearing six inches out and six inches up from the inside of the bottom of the flange. And those no hole zones have to do with the bearing point and where shear is directed into its bearing point through the eye joist. What's happening is within that six inches, we're not allowing installers to cut any types of holes in there. Um, anything on our hole chart you're gonna see usually starts within one foot of bearing. But you'll notice that there's some of these uh, magic marker dots within the uh, area. And we like to call this the unsung hero of the eye joist. This is what we call a knockout. And knockouts are pre-punched holes at the factory um, on all of our eye joist heights and all of our series. They're going to be approximately 12 inches on center, an inch and a half in diameter, and two and a half inches to the center line up from the bottom of the inside flange. So what those allow us to do is knock out uh, for exactly what they're called for, for penetrations that are going to take anything up to an inch and a half. One of the great things about the knockouts, other than being consistently along the joist, is that they're not going to come into play when we start talking about adding in additional holes. In all of our literature, in the TJ4000, is going to state that the knockouts are excluded from any of the calculations within the eye joist. So if we were to have this end bearing here in this hatched area, and we needed a one inch hole somewhere, a lot of times we'll come and we'll see where somebody just went through and they drilled right up here in this area, not thinking about, we've already given you the place mark. Not just that, if we move over, again, 12 inches apart, we could have also gone through here. So avoiding any of this area is always going to be better for, uh, inspection time. Building inspectors are going to look to see where those holes are, and they're usually the number one thing that uh, we get called out for. Now, depending on the size of the hole and where it's going, if it did end up in this area, could mean the difference of a joist failing, which could mean complete replacement of the joist, or possibly having to do what we call a header off detail or a plumber's box in order to support the joist itself. So when Warehouser went through and we turned termed something a knockout. What that allows us to do is we don't have to keep carrying these inch and a half drill bits around. And this is one of the only times I will ever condone using a hammer to make an adjustment within an eye joist. Being that you have these knockouts and that they're pre-punched, you can either use the face of the hammer or the back. I usually prefer the claw of the hammer because it makes a little bit neater hole to go through. But um, right now I'm secured. So you could just take this, pop a hole in, and because it's got that pre-punch already in there, they just knock right out. You can move down, do the next one, the next one, all the way down the length of the eye joist. Coming up in some of the next videos, we'll talk a little bit more about putting larger holes in eye joists. Uh, until then, safety, we're gonna practice it, preach it, and then we're gonna go do our job.